Bushcraft 412 and today I want to do an SHTF advanced class. Now before we get going I just want to say today we uh, hit a hundred thousand views on our uh, videos and I just want to say I'm really you know proud of that and glad we made it this far. This is a small channel to start with and it's really really taken off over the past uh, three or four months and I'm really glad you guys are watching and enjoy the channel and the you know the feedback I get whether it's positive or negative is is really appreciated and uh, just want to point out again, I do have my subscriber giveaway going on until January 26th, so if you're not signed up, get on my channel, find that video and sign up. So, let's get to the video. Oh, as usual, I got a lot of problems with videos I see on YouTube. A lot of people are out there and their SHTF gun videos are, okay, go out, get a Glock, get an AR-15, get an AK-47, and you're good. And I don't think it's the case. Now, I did my video already on the SHTF guns, you know, what you need to survive. And that was kind of a basic class for beginners that I thought would be good for people who are just starting out. This class is more of an advanced class for people who are ready to kind of move on, expand their collection, and broaden their horizons as to the types of guns they have. And here we go. First and foremost... If you have an SHTF gun collection and you've meeting your basic requirements for home defense and you know a battle rifle and you know a nice 22 that can you can use for defense and game and whatever, it's time to move on. First and foremost, and the top gun is a uh, 22 Magnum, a Marlin 22 Mag with a scope on it. Now this is representative of a varmint gun. I know it's not the best varmint gun out there. There's a lot better. But, you should have a varmint gun in your collection. Something that's capable of shooting out hundreds of yards, you know, two, three, four hundred yards, because, let's face it, if SHTF really does happen, every jerk and their brother is going to be out hunting deer. You know, and in New York State, where I live, there's maybe a million, two million deer tops, and there's like 20 million people in New York. Those deer don't stand a chance. You're not, you know, people are going to be fighting over them. It's going to be a horrible, huge mess. I think the people who are going to be successful long term are those people who are capable of hunting varmints and the animals that most people wouldn't normally eat, like possums, raccoons, groundhogs, things like that that people don't want to eat. The guys who are going to be successful are the ones who are plucking those things off from three and 400 yards. So I say to be successful and to be versatile in your food gathering, you need a good varmint rifle. And there's a lot out there. Just, you know, do some searches on them. You know, I really don't have a good varmint rifle, so I can't recommend one. But if someone wants to chime in and has a great varmint rifle, chime in, leave a comment, leave a video response, and let us know, because I think it's really important. You know, I just have the 22 mag, but, you know, someday I'm going to move on. Number two is a uh, break-action shotgun. I know we have a pump action in the uh, beginning video, but why the break-action, you're going to say? This is why. Hang on one second. This is exactly why. You can put that in your backpack. You can saw that down. You can hide it. This is a very easily transportable gun. If you need to be mobile during an SHTF situation, that's your gun. You can break it down. It comes apart in seconds. You never need to clean it. It can never fail you. You know, unless the trigger fails or the firing pin fails or something like that. There's almost no moving parts. These are great indestructible guns. In fact, I've had this gun since I was 13 years old. It was my first gun. It still shoots like brand new. And for, you know, you can saw these things down. You can cut that barrel in half. And this is something you could, you know, hide in your pants. My God, you know, you could stuff this in your pants and walk around with it. You know, very small, very portable. Love the idea of having a shotgun that is that portable. So I highly recommend. And you can get these for $80. So these are quite cheap. Let me just put this together. Very cheap guns. You're not going to pay a fortune. Great thing to have. All different calibers. Four tons. You know, I have a 410 and a 20. You know, for 80 90 bucks, you're going to spend on them. And you can get them used for like 40 and 50 have one of these laying around. You can break it down, 
stuff it under your couch, stuff it in a closet, put it in your pantry, wherever. You know, if SHTF happens, and say the government is confiscating guns, that's a really easy gun to hide. I'll tell you what, you can, you know, you can hide that about anywhere. Really neat, definite good way to hide a gun. You can keep it in your car, you can put it on a bicycle, and no one's going to know you have it. It's very discreet, and I like that. And then you have the versatility that comes with a shotgun, in that you can shoot buckshot, you can shoot slugs, you can shoot birdshot. Great for defense, great for hunting. And that's what you need in an SHTF situation, and it's a great $80 addition to your collection. Likewise, for the more advanced, you have more money to burn, there are lots of foldable semi-automatic rifles. For example, the third one down is the kel SU-16. That's a 223, uh, mostly uh, composite, you know, plastic uh, stock and, and everything, and even the receiver, and this thing folds down to next to nothing. This, as you can see, is a backpack gun. You can put this in your backpack, you can hide it, you can put it under the seat of your car, and you have massive firepower because these take AR-15 clips. You can hide magazines in the stock. Very neat, compact weapon you can hide and gives you lots of firepower. You can use it for hunting, you can use it for self-defense, you can hide it, bury it. Very nice weapon, once again. If people are confiscating weapons and stealing weapons, you can hide this anywhere. Very small, very compact, and the 223 bullets are really tiny. You can carry a ton of them. I think this is an amazing SHTF rifle. Number three, well, I'm sorry, the last gun I have here more for, you know, it's, it's a Saiga 7.62x39, so it is an AK variant. And I just wanted to show, you know, as much as, you know, I kind of said you don't need the AK, you don't need the AR-15, it will not hurt you to have one. Definitely will not. Uh, this is mine. I have a scope on it with a quick detach. So I can use this for long range. I can use it for short range. The scope comes off with just the pull of a lever. Um, unfortunately, the Saigas only accept the 10-round magazines unless you convert them. Kind of stinks, but, you know, go out, get an AK, you know, get an AK-47, get a variant get something like that. If you have the money, something like this will throw a lot of lead down range. So even though I'm kind of saying you don't need it, it will not hurt to have it. So don't think I'm knocking these guns. The AR-15s are great guns. AK-47s are great guns. I love them both. You know, I'm a little bit more of a fan of the AK-47 because I think in an SHTF scenario, it's more durable and less likely to jam on you, uh, especially if you're in really dirty environments. But the problem is with a gun like that is Look at it. That's an intimidating, mean gun. That is a gun that might get confiscated. That's a gun that people are going to want to steal. Your single-shot 12-gauge, people don't care about that. Even if the government's taking guns, they may not take that. They may just say, oh, geez, it's just a break-action 12-gauge and leave it. So planning ahead like that, I think, is important. And when you're coming up with your system, you always want to be thinking self-defense, home defense, and getting food. And you need to look at that. You want your guns to be as capable of doing as many as possible. The AK-47, for example, is capable of hunting deer. You know, you got, you know, you should be buying some soft point bullets for this thing. I know there's lots of cheap uh, military surplus ammo, but get yourself some nice 154 grain soft points so you can hunt with this thing. Likewise, the Keltec. You can use that for home defense, self defense. You can also use that for kind of varmint. It's, it, it's a, a low-range varmint gun. It's not accurate enough to be long-range, but within 100 yards, you could probably varmint hunt with that. You can deer hunt, but likewise, you're going to need a, a higher-grain bullet, like a 60-grain bullet, and you're going to have to make a very well-placed shot with a soft-point bullet. Now, your 12-gauge, you know, tons of ammo you can get for that. You know, get yourself some nice buckshot, get yourself some nice slugs. You can hunt with it. Self-defense serves every purpose. Now, the varmint gun is kind of limited in that you're only really going to, you know, because the bullets are pretty small. Usually they're 22 caliber or in that neighborhood. Um, not much bigger. Usually they don't go up beyond, you know, the area of the 22. 
I mean, yes, there are bigger ones, but I like the smaller ones because, A, you can use it for small game and not ruin a lot of meat. But then, number two, noise, you're not going to draw a lot of attention to your location. So the varmint gun's a little more specialized, but the other three are kind of look for a gun that's universal in that it can do a little bit of anything. For example, SHTF, if I can keep one gun, it's likely going to be that Caltech because I can hunt deer, I can hunt small game. You know, it'll probably ruin a lot of meat in small game, but it's a compact, something I can hide, something I can put in a backpack, in a car, in a truck, anywhere, and I can carry a ton of ammo for it. So it's a nice, versatile gun, and that's really, really appealing to me. But on the other hand, you know, I have in the neighborhood of like 15, 20 guns now, so as a part of my collection, it fits in very well. And when you're building your collection, you just have to think what holes are there in my collection and start filling those holes one by one. And you don't need to spend a fortune. You don't need to start out with an AR-15. If you don't have any guns and you're getting into this, consider buying a single shot 12 gauge. 80, 90 bucks. You fill all your holes with that. Hunting, self-defense, home defense. Boom. You've got all that covered. Now you're saving up for an AK-47. Okay, so something happens in that intervening time. You've got this little cheapo to rely on. Something happens while you're saving up for the expensive gun, you got no guns. So my advice is get something, even if it's inexpensive, just to have something, especially if you're a beginner. But as you build up, you know, do you want to buy one of these, a single shot 12 gauge, even though you don't have one, you got a pump, you got a semi-auto 12 gauge, it may not be a bad idea. Because like I said, it's something you can pull apart, hide it, saw down that barrel, you know, you can kind of, you can do a lot with it. So always be looking for useful ways to use different items, you know, and that single shot gun that you bought when you were 13 can come in really good and handy in an SHTF scenario because it's going to be chaos. People are going to be getting killed and there's going to be a lot of people out there looking for food, hunting, and there's going to be a lot of confusion and it's, you know, it's going to be a mess. There's going to be a lot of people fighting over a very small population of deer. And I think the people who, I really do believe the people who are going to survive are going to be those whose capabilities to get food are not only just deer hunting, but varmint hunting and small game hunting. And you know what? Why not invest in learning how to trap, you know, real trapping, not setting, you know, survival snares, but go to your store, get some real traps, learn how to do trapping, learn how to, you know, bird hunt, how to call in birds, how to call in geese and ducks and things like that. You have to be versatile. And having a gun that can hunt birds is important too. You know, you can do that with a single shot. You can do that with a pump. You can do it with a semi-auto. You just want to make sure you have that capability. Bushcraft 412, I'm done with this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Once again, thanks for watching, everyone. I really do appreciate it. And if you're not in my subscriber giveaway contest yet, still plenty of time. Get in there.